chairman textile our chairman west bengal state center and vice president of institution of engineers india mr sandeep kumar dev to give the welcome address sir thank you very much uh, thank you very much professor ray on behalf of west bengal state center institution of engineers india i welcome you all to this webinar organized by the textile engineering division of the institution of engineers india west bengal state center on a very very topical issue of natural fibers for sustainable textiles i would like to welcome our panelist of today's program professor ravi shankar chattopadhyay is a professor in the department of textile engineering iit delhi sir you are most welcome to this program dr manoj kumar sarkar teaching fellow institute of textile and clothing the hong kong polytechnic university just now he has said that uh, now hong kong is you know almost flooded with the omicron i believe that uh, within a very few not weeks but days the flood will be over and welcome to this webinar sir you are completely safe here in this platform at least i would also like to welcome our president although he is not here but any moment he could join dr hemant o thakare he is there in the headquarter so i believe that uh, he might be joining at any point of time i would like to welcome professor nitosh kumar bromo the honorary secretary of west bengal state center and my colleague in the west bengal state center committee and finally i would like to welcome professor jonjon roy the chairman of textile engineering division board of iei and the committee member of west bengal state center who is the main person behind this show well although i i believe that you all know but still it's my labor duty to let you know once more that our beloved institution of engineers india has crossed the century mark in the year 2019 so a century old institution with such a legacy very easily we have transformed our technical activities from physical to virtual form for the last two years well everything comes with positive and negative effect the pandemic the covid 19 has taken away many things many good things from us but one thing it has given us which is nothing but to come across virtually you know i believe that you all agree that before the this omicron before this pandemic how many of us used to join in virtually in different webinars very few but after the covid came it became the only option to spread the technical activities of different institutions whether it is a social society or a college or an university now virtual platform becomes becomes rather within these two years became the only medium and now our entire world is used to this virtual platform and i believe that even though we are slowly slowly opening up with physical interaction physical seminars but in future also everything is going to be in dual mode that is virtual and physical in our west bengal state center we started our physical activity with the felicitation program of our president dr thakare just uh, a, a week back and we are planning to do our future programs in dual mode that is in uh, physical as well as in virtual 
on 4th of march you all know the entire world celebrates the world engineering day and this year we have decided to celebrate the world engineering day we are trying to celebrate rather it's better to say we are trying to celebrate the world engineering day in dual mode that is both virtually as well as physical meeting well uh, i don't want to discuss anything on natural fibers for sustainable textiles because i am not a expert forget about expertise i am not a user also of this very little knowledge rather no knowledge and uh, you know experts are there dr sharkar dr chattopadhyay and our own professor shadhan chandra roy is there to discuss on everything i am not going to speak any more let us straight away go into the technical sessions once again i would like to welcome you all to this virtual webinar conducted by the west bengal state center textile engineering division thank you and have a nice program thank you very much thank you sir thank you for your very hearty welcome speech in a very lucid manner you have highlighted a quite a good item of matters so with your kind permission i will go ahead till our president joins so now as a chairman of textile engineering division board i have just been elected i have not so far attended any council meeting so far but i can assure you as chairman of the dxtv dxdb that i will do my best for the betterment upliftment of the textile engineering division of the institution of engineers so i will request all the state committee members the state committees uh, local committees their chairman their secretary to organize more and more programs as well as to look up that the membership matter means to increase the membership and related matter so that our textile division can go ahead for as it is as it's a very small department compared to the civil mechanical electrical and others so in terms of number of memberships we are certainly small but i believe in activity if i go back to my last two years activity i can say as a small department we have carried a large number of activities was the large department could not so we will go with our all types of activities in future too and i will certainly help all the state center textile division persons local center textile division persons so that they can work and i can cooperate with them for the betterment of the institution of engineers now as our chairman kate is absent he is in a space in a urgent travel plan so at the moment he is in the flight so he is not in a position to participate in the program but as a uh, divisional board chairman i will give the theme of the program to all my attendees the panelists know the program theme the other members know but the attendees do not know so for the attendees i will read the brief idea about the theme of the today's webinar textile industry is very old very old but vast industry in india and in many and in many countries in the world since the inception textile industry has been passing through changes in terms of technologies raw material and end products due to continuous innovative approaches in one hand and change in need of the consumers on the other the present need of the society is the application of sustainable textile fibers and their processes for obtaining the sustainable textile products in order to fulfill the requirements scientists are dedicated for the developing and sourcing sustainable fibers particularly natural fibers it is very much important to understand their properties structural behavior 
as the textile fibers are subjected to good number of mechanical and chemical processes for converting into desired end product the relevant processes are also to be made environment friendly in order to reduce the carbon footprint the natural fibers are more suitable for producing sustainable textiles so continuous innovation is going on for exploiting the potentials of newly sourced natural fibers by studying their physical and chemical properties considering the advantages of engineered functional properties man made fibers are sometimes preferred for developing sustainable textiles however in such cases some special finishing treatment are to be given for fulfilling the desired properties needed in end uses keeping in view the potentials of natural fibers and their scientific applications for developing sustainable textiles the following two following two prominent academicians with long experience have been chosen as panelists for the greater academic interest of the institution of engineers the panelists are professor ravi shankar chattopadhyay professor and former head department of textile and fiber engineering iit delhi and dr manoj kumar sarkar teaching fellow institute of textiles and clothing hong the hong kong polytechnic university so before requesting the panel for delivering the pro, their presentation i will give a short bio data or introduction of the panelist our first panelist is professor dr r chattopadhyay fie graduated from university of calcutta in textile technology and thereafter obtained his mtech and phd degrees from iit delhi he is presently working as professor in the department of textile and fiber engineering iit delhi professor chattopadhyay is involved in teaching research consultancy organizing seminars and tailor made courses for industry and academia for the last 35 years he is recipient of monbusho scholarship japan and eminent engineers award in 2014 by the institution of engineers other than teaching he has involved in academic administration in iit delhi as head department of textile and fiber engineering chairman jee iit delhi coordinator qip cep professor in charge planning hostel warden etc he has guided 14 doctoral and 64 master theses and has been more than 100 research papers in national international journals and conferences he is member of number of professional societies the institution of engineers india ist professor chattopadhyay is currently member of international advisory board for journal of textile engineering japan chairman bis standard on ropes and cords editorial board member of indian journal of fiber and textile research member board of tits and bhiwani tits bhiwani member board of studies up technical university member board of directors nithin spinners bilwara he was involved in developing of products and redesigning of nmc chorkha for kbic he has also contributed to mooc courses administered by iit madras on behalf of mhrd delhi now a little introduction of our second panelist dr manoj kumar sarkar has more than 30 years of research experience teaching experience in research teaching and industry dr sarkar is presently working as an academic and faculty staff as teaching fellow in the institute of textiles and clothing under the hong kong polytechnic university dr sarkar completed his under graduation in textile technology from the university of calcutta and a master degree in textiles from the university of mumbai india he earned his doctoral degree in textile under the supervision of very renowned person professor jintu fan from the hong kong polytechnic university 
before joining his present position dr sarkar worked as a research head in a hong kong based textile company he received together with professor jin tu fan a silver medal award in the iena international exhibition held at narnberg germany and the outstanding professional services and innovation award from hong kong polytechnic university for the development of plant structured fabric dr sarkar published and presented various reputable international journals conferences he has also a few international patent to his credit so with the short introduction or brief bio data of the panelist i will request our first panelist professor r chattopadhyay to start his presentation Thank you. 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 Mr. King Suk Sen, please arrange the screen sharing facility. Sir, please share your screen, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is coming. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, it is coming. Yes, visible, audible. Okay. <coughs> So good afternoon to all of you, and uh, <clears throat> I should thank uh, Professor Roy for my introduction, and uh, also must thank the Institute of Institution of Engineers uh, to invite me for presenting whatever I am going to present in this part in this webinar. <clears throat> now the topic that i have chosen is natural fibers and sustainability sustainability is the theme <clears throat> so let us uh, discuss about sustainability first sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs this is one of the very important statement about sustainability now art has sustained itself for million of years and hosted life in many forms human civilization has rapidly progressed especially in last centuries but at the same time it is consuming natural resources at an alarming speed the question that comes to our mind that is it sustainable the mother earth has started to react violently and natural disaster in many forms are appearing time and again and we come across such news from different parts of the world that there is some kind of you know disaster happening somewhere else yes, <clears throat> some violent eruption of volcano or tsunami or storm they have become and the weather's pattern is changing very rapidly these things are a kind of reaction that we are witnessing today now sustainability dimensions if we see there are three dimensions of sustainability and there environment society and economy the environmental sustainability actually discusses about the preservation of nature 
and the environment that we leave for the future generation. Social sustainability is to create and maintain the well-being of a community as a whole. That is the part of social sustainability. And economic sustainability is developing business and practices which provide a sound basis for increasing the wealth without over-exploiting the resources that is raw materials, energy. Now the questions that comes to one mind related to the role of natural fibers in sustainability. So some questions that came to no. my mind. First of all, how far the natural fibers are sustainable? The second question that comes to the mind, which natural fiber is most sustainable? The third is, can you replace one natural fiber by another more sustainable natural fiber. If we find that all natural fibers may not be sustainable because some natural fibers may need too much of water or the kind of need or demand that you have, we need too much of space, landmass to grow them, then whether one natural fiber, can we segregate the fiber in terms of whether one of them is more sustainable than the other? And if so, is it possible to really replace one by the other? Can natural fibers possess all the relevant properties that can fulfill the need of many fibrous products that we see today? There's ever increasing number of fibrous products that we find now. And the question therefore comes that can natural fibers possess all the relevant properties that can fulfill the need of many varieties of fibrous products that we have today? And there's always a question that comes to the mind, natural versus man-made fibers, which is more sustainable? There are a lot of argument, a lot of debate, in favor of natural fiber or in, in favor of man-made fibers that we come across. So these are the various questions that comes to the mind. And therefore, we have to see the natural fiber from a proper perspective and try to find out that what are the unique properties that we have in natural fibers so that if not in all applications, in some applications, natural fibers can be used successfully. Or can we really find out some products which do not exist now, where natural fibers can find a place? Now here is a chart of you know, natural fibers. And we see that a organic natural fiber, inorganic natural fiber, and polymeric natural fibers, which are called regenerated cellulose. The source is some cellulosic material. Now, under the organic, we have the plant fiber and protein fibers. Under protein, we have silk, wool, mohair, cashmere, camel, hairs, rabbit hair, all the, everything will come here. Now we are basically focusing on only right now on the plant fibers. In the plant fiber kingdom, there are again so many types of fibers we have. We have bust fibers, leaf fibers, seed and fruit fibers, straw fibers, and glass fiber, grass fibers, the different types of grass. You see, all these plant fibers have already found some use and they're being used. 
there are some traditional use or conventional use and now the scientists are looking for use which is non traditional in nature so we are basically focusing on right now on the vast fibers category here i was just going through an article where i found that people are trying to find out the cumulative energy demand for the production of 1 kg of fiber and 1 kg of textile that is yarn that is made out of these fiber now if we look at this table we will find that cotton jute and kenaf these three fibers have been chosen by the author and this paper is details are given here below we fiber that jute fiber if you look at it which is a very important fiber for our country cotton and jute both are very you know, important fiber the cumulative energy demand for jute fiber is fiber stage that is to grow the plant and extract fiber is 29.55 mega joule and to convert into yarns it takes 97 mega joule that is the kind of energy demand that we have and if we compare it with cotton cotton is much more than jute and here is the data for kenaf also so if we go by only by the logic of energy demand then we can say that jute is will be highly sustainable all natural fibers are biodegradable that is a common you no know, property however as from the energy point of view jute is appears to be much better than even cotton or kenaf the question that comes in the mind that does it mean that jute will be able to replace cotton the answer to the question probably will be no because the kind of products that we require where cotton will uniquely suit and jute fiber will not suit there so there are certain products where cotton will be most suitable so only there could be some products where jute would be more suitable there will be some other product variety where kenaf may be suitable or some other fiber will be suitable so it is not that cotton can be replaced by jute or jute can be replaced by cotton each fiber for that matter has some unique property combinations and this unique property combinations is a gift of nature again because they are not really produced by human nature has produced them if you look at the social benefit of plant fiber in general then we find that 150 countries are involved in exports and imports of natural plant fibers the plant fibers are storable and durable produced in arid regions or in extremely wet regions like jute fibers in india and bangladesh extremely wet whereas cotton and wool are produced in arid regions where rain is much less grown in rotation with food crops or they provide food as by product and all of them are biodegradable so these are the very unique the benefits that we get from the natural fibers especially plant fibers now let us discuss about more about this plant fiber now fiber properties we need to understand because if we want to explore the possible use of this fibers in in products 
which we have not seen, then we have to first understand the properties of the fiber very well. We have to look at the fiber as a material. And unless we are very much clear about the properties of the material, we will not be able to really you know, project that what could be the possible end use of these fibers or where it can go. See, today, because of the development of technology, there are a lot of new products which are coming and such new products were not existing earlier. And since if we want to think that there is a space available where the natural fibers, plant fibers can probably possibly have a place, then we must know the properties of this fiber from the material point of view. Because fibers are the building blocks of any product like cells of human body. Understanding therefore the property from material perspective is key to explore its demanding applications. And the fiber properties can affect its processing behavior, the product performance, the safety of a product, the durability of the product, and we have to identify the inherent strength and weakness with respect to any applications that may come into our mind. And therefore, understanding the properties or characterizing the fibers is very, very important. The first thing is cross-sectional shape. If we see, nature has given us so many different types of plant fibers. And if you look at the cross-sections, there are so many varieties that exist in nature as far as the cross-section is concerned. Some are polygonal, some are hexagonal, some are cylindrical, some are polygonal. So different types of shapes are there and we can make use of this variation in cross-sectional shape to suit a specific need of a product. So fiber surface we see they're rough and many of them are porous in nature. Most of them I find here, they're porous, there's a porosity within the fibers. What, how this porosity can be exploited in some product that we need to think that this is a, this is something which is available with some fibers and can this porous nature of the fibers could be used as an advantage in certain products. That is what could be the, you no, know, by, by this knowledge will gain if we really study the cross-sectional shape. Similarly, could be physical parameters like length, fineness, diameter. These values are already available. What we need to see is that the diameters of these fibers has a wide range. Each fiber has a variation in length and fineness and diameters. And between fibers also, there is a lot of variation in their length and fineness. So length, fineness, diameters are varying. So you can see some fibers which are very coarse like abaca, quiet, pineapple, and some fibers are relatively on the finer side, which is rami, flax, hemp, they are finer fibers. So nature has given us fibers, some of them are very coarse, some of them are very fine. Similarly, swelling, the, and moisture regain. So many fibers, most of these fibers will absorb moisture. And as a result of that, the diameter of the volume can increase on wetting. Now this increase in diameter or volume would be beneficial in some products. So if we know this, that how much is the swelling which is possible in the different forms of it, is in a single fiber, isolated single fiber form or in a, in a group form like in a yarn or in a fabric 
and probably we can say that the swelling can be used as an advantage in some products and in some products this may not be that advantageous in nature also so keeping in mind this we can think of the use of these fibers the other one is again density of these fibers the most of these fibers have a density close to 1.5 to 1.54 but there are some fibers natural fibers which is have a less density like coir 1.2 as reported similarly abaca sisal is a low density fiber relatively 1.3 rest are close to 1.5 so coir is a very light fiber where banana abaca and sisal are moderately moderate in density fibers are there so there is a density variation in the plant fiber also then porosity as we have already seen percentage wise values are stated in this diag in this table and therefore what is their apparent density is also stated here so and the true densities are also given here so the porous nature we have already seen by studying the constructions and we can quantify the porosity that is the pore volume percentage wise and that is to the order of you see in some fibers it can go as high as 35 to 53% especially in banana fibers so the porous nature of these fibers makes the fiber light and they can make it this porous nature can also help in absorbing lot of liquid within the void spaces of the fiber itself besides the space that exists between the yarns next the most important for what we know that whenever you discuss about fibers is tensile property that is tenacity breaking extension and rupture because we all know whatever we see that fibers have to be finally processable we have to process them on machines and any machine that you use to process the fibers will always subject the fibers to some kind of stresses and therefore the fibers must be able to resist damage and breakage when the mechanical stress is acting on them during processing and hence the tensile property of the fibers becomes important unless there is certain strength in them the fibers may not be processable at all so tensile property that is tenacity and breaking extension together are important and some data is given there and we see that breaking extension of all the fibers are low except coir in the plant category of fibers then banana and coir are the weakest fiber that also is visible here in this diagram and toughness wise rami and flax are superior than other fibers so some of these informations are really helpful and if we classify the fibers in terms of tenacity and breaking extension then we can classify them as tenacity high and low signal extension high and low and what we see here we have put the fibers in this matrix and we see there is no natural fiber which are both strong and extendable that is in this particular box there is no fibers which can come the fiber which is very strong at the same time have a breaking extension which is also very high that combination is not there so nature has not produced such fiber which are extremely strong at the same time a very high extension which does not exist in nature in the other categories we could place some fibers so we have weak fibers density wise low banana cotton coir but they are extendable extendable from the point of view that the extension is more than 8% similarly we have jute pine apple pineapple fibers which is also density wise low they are weak 
but they have two extensions. And we have fibers here in this box where you see these are the fibers which are tenacity wise quite high. They are strong fibers, but they have low extensions. So fibers have been classified according to their tenacity breaking extensions. And what we find that we do not, there's no fiber which is strong as well as extendable. We can also look at this thermal property of the fibers. And fibers are general, they are all insulated. And porosity that we have seen earlier in the construction of the fibers, they can insulate, they can enhance the insulation of the product that we make out of these fibers. Because fiber themselves, the intrinsic property of the fiber is such that the thermal conductivity is low. At the same time, being porous, there's a lot of air that goes into those void spaces. And therefore, it can further enhance the insulation part. Chemical constituents wise, the fibers are also, you know, there is a chart over here, and we see that cellulose content wise, water, ash, lignin, the data is given here. So, if we want to convert some fibers to produce, uh, let us say, the regenerated cellulose, so we know that which fibers are more cellulose content. and how these fibers are going to react with dyes or how they will behave when you keep them in open atmosphere. If you want these informations we'll get if we study the chemical nature of the fibers and that information is given here in this particular table. So resistance to chemical sunlight, microbe, generally we feel that from the point of view of resistance to all these things, they are generally much inferior to synthetic fibers. But within the category of you know, plant fibers, we can say that fiber like abaca is microbial resistance is poor. Most of the fibers are poor except quad. Quad microbial resistance is much better compared to other natural fibers. Silent resistance is abaca, sisal, manila are quite good. We didn't find information regarding to choir and jute. Jute also, I think, poor, but that data is not there available. Resistance to chemicals are also stated here. So all these informations can really help us in finding out the suitable use of these fibers in newer and more innovative products. If we do the SWOT analysis of the BAST fibers now, based because once we have the information regarding the properties, so we can now go for a SWOT analysis of the fibers. And if we, here is, let us say, discuss about strength. And we can say in general, we find plant fibers are fully renewable. There is a very strong point about these fibers. Carbon neutral, they absorb the same amount of carbon as they produce. 150 countries are involved in exports. There are a lot of people who are involved with the you know, production of these fiber, the processing of these fibers, and then making products, selling them. So a lot of countries, a lot of people are involved with the natural fibers. They are storable and durable also to some extent. But obviously, the rate is not that good as it is for synthetic fibers. And produced in arid regions and grown in rotations with food crops. We have discussed it about earlier, and they are biodegradable. This is a very, very strong point about the all plant fibers or natural fibers. So these are the strong points of it. Weakness is that which really you know, limits its use in many uh, challenging or very uh, products. One is that the variability in the physical characteristics and mechanical properties. This is one of the very negative points that we generally people will always say that the physical characteristics, that is length, diameter, why they're highly variable. 
poor resistance to microbial attack, less thermally stable, and suitable for temperature, for temperate applications. And they have poor durability in comparison to synthetic fibers. So variability is one part which is very, very you know, a negative aspect of these fibers. And durability is also something where people always complain about the use of natural fibers in demanding applications. The other weakness is hydrophilicity. Hydrophilicity of the fiber leads to swelling. And therefore, it may give problem in especially some products where swelling can change the properties. Most hydrophobic thermostat and thermoplastic matrices are incompatible with such fibers. Due to absorption of water, weight may increase by more than 30%. So these are some of the problems that you face this fiber being hydrophilic. But there could be advantages also being hydrophilic in some other applications. So you should see that the same property could be advantageous in some products and could be disadvantageous in some other products. Poor compatibility and weightability. The surface of natural fibers enclosed by non cellulosic constituents. Removal of weak boundary layer through dissolving hemicellulose and lignin helps it to improve the binding. So that's what we do when you try to develop some composites. Poor strength, as we have already discussed, that when you compare the strength of natural fibers or plant fibers with the synthetic ones, high performance fibers, then you see strength is something which is much less in the case of natural fibers. It has a lower extension, except square, and poor recovery from any type of deformations, tensile bending, or that means the fibers are not really very, very elastic in nature. There will be permanent deformation if there is a severe stress that acts on it, either tensile bending or torsion. There will be permanent type of deformation. So these are some of the weakness. And inconsistency in the properties, the length diameter varies a lot that we have already said, and mechanical properties also varies a lot. So these are the weakness. And there's, they are a poor fire resistance. This is another weakness. They catch fire very easily. Except the fiber wool, which is not plant fiber, but wool fiber, we all know that it does not catch the fire that quickly and the self extinguishing fiber. But other plant fiber, generally, they are not fire resistant. The ability is poor, already you have, you have this, uh, it's, I've already have said. And the price, price fluctuation is also too much because of harvesting results. Sometimes we get very good yield, the price falls down. Sometimes because of the agricultural politics, the price may go up. So plus price fluctuation is something which is there in the case of natural fibers, which is not that much in the case of probably synthetic fibers. But what could be the benefit of variability? Generally we say the variability means something that will make the product also highly variable. But you see variability in construction leads to porous structure of the yarn or porous structure of the non-oven that we make out of it. In that case, the variability in construction is going to help us. It will improve the bulk density, high bulk will be there, or that is it will cause low bulk density. Thermal insulation is going to improve, water entrapment property is going to improve, low pressure drop during filtration, if it is used, non-ovens are used for a filtration purpose, then we can say this is also going to be a benefit. And because of this variation in cross section, there is going to be noise reduction for products, especially non oven made from non circular fibers. So, variability of cross section could be beneficial in these you know, kind of products. Whereas, irregular shape and regions of the fiber. Rough and textured surface 
can improve the high frictional grip and dust removal through scraping actions. So we have to understand that these are the benefit of non-circular cross sections. And we can make use of this in certain products. Opportunities are that favorable demography with high income of working population can lead to higher demand. So the demand is going to increase and therefore the possibility of demand for natural fibers is going to grow. And with the depletion of the oil reserves, also there is no doubt that the demand for natural fibers is going to rise. And people are also becoming more and more conscious about the environment, especially in the Western countries. And they're looking for, looking for your uh, natural fiber alternatives. And they're also looking for trying to develop new innovative products from natural fibers. So opportunities exist and we should exploit it. So being sustainable resource, biodegradable and non-polluting, the requirement of natural fiber based products is bound to increase. And globally, the natural fibers are capable to provide employment to millions of people, especially to small scale farmers in the developing countries. So these are the very strong point about these fibers. And the threat obviously is coming from the synthetic fibers. And the, obviously the, the synthetic fibers is highly dependent on the oil, uh, the petroleum, and therefore the time will come when obviously this, uh, the petrol price is going to rise day by day, uh, synthetic fiber cost is going to be more and more and the day will come when obviously oil will not, be, will not be available. So the threat mainly comes from synthetic fibers. And but point, people will also question that do we have, can we really produce enough natural fibers to meet the need of the present day population of the world? And if that question comes to the mind, then probably the kind of demand, fiber demand that we have that demand obviously cannot be met by the natural fibers alone as things stand today. Unless we produce more and more natural fibers, but that would need more and more land mass also. So natural fibers versus synthetic is, you know, if we put them together into one single slide, density wise, origin wise, structure wise, nature, durability, use, cost, the natural fibers, as you see, somewhat plus minus means both. Minus means it is low. So this particular slide gives a glimpse of the comparison of the properties of the two fibers, natural and synthetics, put together. Like if we say look at the durability aspects, natural fibers it will be low. So synthetics, it is high. If we go by cost, natural fibers has advantage, it is plus low cost, synthetic fibers will be costly. Recyclability, yes for natural fibers, no for synthetic fibers. Though people are trying to recycle the synthetic fibers, we are reprocessing the, you know, like the, the uh, pet bottles, and making fibers out of it again. So that drive is there also. So that this is a slide where we can really compare the different properties of natural vis-a-vis -vis synthetic fibers. So research direction, if we see, if we want some suggestions, then we can say what is required is improvement in fiber yield improvement in fineness and strength through genetic modifications, reduction in variability in the properties of the fiber, if that is possible, development of efficient fiber extraction process, energy efficient processing technology is something which is also required and establishing standards for pan fiber products 
particularly for technical applications. Product innovations is high value products we have to manufacture so that farmers and everybody associated with the business of natural fibers, they can get remunerative prices. And the new high value products could be composites for automobiles, geotextiles, building materials, furnitures, sound absorption pad. So these are the new areas into which one has to think of using these natural fibers. And here in this particular diagram, there are fibers, the potential applications are listed here for what is the traditional applications, what is the potential applications, and what are the byproducts of this hemp fiber, social fiber, choir fibers, abaca, these are all listed in this particular slide. For jute also, flax, rami, banana. So, and if we think about the potential applications in automobile sectors, that could be door panels, glove box, insulation, seat backrest, trunk floor, floor panels, they all can be made from flax, sisal, or cotton fibers, or coconut fiber, cotton fiber, flax fibers. And it is just general list. You can see that there is a scope for use of plant fibers here also. Building materials, there are so many different types of products within blending materials, panel, roof, roof, furnitures, cupboards, wardrobes, where sisal, jute, or bamboo, jute, all these fibers in the composite form can be used in the sports, tennis racket, bicycle frame, snowboards also. These are the flax fibers as a place. Furniture, the chair, quad fiber, or polyester composites can be used. So with the concluding remarks are the promotion of plant fiber products in domestic and international markets is required. Production of fibers to be remunerative to the farmers, otherwise farmers will leave this particular, growing these fibers. Establishing efficient supply chain from raw material to the product to the customers. This is also very important. And conducting international market survey time to time so as to know what is the international demand and in which direction the demand is going. With this, I close this particular you know, discussion. And I now leave it to all my listeners or viewers. And if they have any questions, as whenever they can raise some issues or questions, I can, I'll be happy to answer them. That will be decided by Professor Ray, whether it will be just now or it will be after the second presentation. With this, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Professor Ravi Shankar Chattopadhyay for giving such an valuable and nice presentation for the benefit of the attendees, including me. So during your, first of all, I will say that question answering will be taken after completion of the presentation of our second panelist. But before going to the second panelist, I would just make a few comments on your presentation. Chatterjee, sir, mm -hmm. you have, yes, you have given a very wide characterization of all natural fibers in tabular form according to their property parameters in order to identify their strength and weakness for different applications. So from the tables, it becomes very, it, be, it is very easy to select a fiber for a particular application. We have also discussed the benefits of weakness, means how the weakness of a particular fiber compared to other fiber can be converted into its strength. You have also mentioned the global position of natural fibers. And ultimately, you have also compared the natural fibers along with the synthetic fibers. That means we have covered the total SWOT 
strength, weakness, opportunity, and thread. So I think you have really presented something which will be beneficial for the all attendees. So with these small remarks, I will come to the second panelist, Dr. Manos Kumar Sarkar. He is from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Already I have given his short introduction in the beginning. So now I will request our Dr. Manos Kumar Sarkar to start his presentation. So King, Mr. King Suksen, please arrange the screen sharing facility. I think it is visible, right? Hello, everyone can hear me? Yes, you are audible as well as your slides are visible. Okay, so should I start now? Yes, yes, certainly. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for your nice introduction and good afternoon to all of you. Those are uh, uh, hearing me. So, uh, although it's uh, in, I'm from Hong Kong and in Hong Kong, it is now uh, evening time. So, because Hong Kong is around two and a half hours ahead of Indian time. So, today I'm going to talk on biomimic approach for developing sustainable functional textiles and clothing. So, let's see what is sustainable test textiles. I think. Uh, Already, Professor Chatterjee talked a lot on that. I just uh, uh, summarize only uh, uh, within a slides. So, sustainable textiles means that all materials, process, inputs, and outputs are healthy and safe for human and environment. That means not hazardous. So, if some product is not hazardous, we normally call it a sustainable textiles. So, sustainable textiles are such material which are biodegradable and renewable. Obviously, they are, there is a nice comparison, I think uh, Professor Chatterjee already given to us regarding which is more sustainable, which is less sustainable. So I'm not going into that. I'm just uh, talking about in general sustainability. So in general, uh, all kinds of uh, natural fibers are counted in sustainable materials because they are normally biodegradable and uh, some of those can be reused also. So what is biomimetics? Biomimetics or the biomimicry is, is the imitation of the nature. So copying the nature or copying some of the process uh, which is happening in the nature, we call a biomimicry. So it's a uh, any artificial mechanism which mimic the natural one, we normally call it biomimic. So the natural world around us provide a multitude of examples of functional system built with a minimum amount of materials. That's the most uh, a beauty of the nature. So several times you can see it that uh, only very little amount of materials are required to achieve a big things and that nat nature shows us. We try to grasp some of the nature's unlimited potentials to provide better solutions for smarter, stronger, and sustainable material. So here we can see the picture of the bar fruit. I think uh, every of us almost know this thing that uh, the uh, Velcro, which actually emitted the uh, uh, bar fruit and imitating that this Velcro actually came to the market. George actually developed this one uh, uh, from uh, seeing the Velcro's natural property of catching something. 
So why biomimetic in textiles? Obviously, it's a big question. Why biomimetic in textiles? So uh, materials developed by mimicking a nature, it is expected would be more comfortable and environmental friendly. So most of the textiles are also fibrous material and nature has lot of fibrous materials with examples of structures made of sustainable fibers. Uh, I'm not uh, going into the, into the fibers much, but I will talk mainly about the sustainable fibers, uh, like natural fibers. So all my development, all this thing, researches mainly uh, with the natural fibers. So an extraordinary fiber structure can be observed in plants and trees. Yeah, our skin is also a unique covering materials that covers our body. So if something we can develop of similar type of thing, so it would be a unique thing. So let's first talk about some of the features of the plant. It has already been uh, proved that branching structure of a plant can help to uh, uh, foster the water movement. So a big tree around uh, uh, 400 uh, uh, meter cube of water transport from ground to the environment. So, and it has been observed, obviously there are many other factors, but this branching structure of the tree also is a responsible factor for this. So the unique arrangement of the tree wood gives us a very high strength. So wood is composed of parallel tubular cells reinforced with the cellulose fibril in a spiral wound and embedded in a matrix or hemicellulose and lignin. So natural uh, things all have many different types of fiber and our textile is also a fiber. So we definitely can uh, copy some of the things in the textiles to make it better. So most plants, are able to passively actuating their organs by controlling anisotropic deformation of cell exposed to the moisture. So uh, stomata, uh, uh, leaf stomata is one of them. So it, it when water is moved in that uh, plant, so it uh, open up. And when the water is less in the plant, it uh, closed so that more water can be retained inside the tree. So it's a unique feature. So some plant leaves also surface having the uh, spatial structure, which made it super hydrophobic in nature. So let's see one by one. So this is a plant structure, uh, uh, natural plant structure. So main stem are divided in the branches, which is again divided in sub branches. Okay, so imitating that, we develop a three layer plant structure fabric where in the bottom layer, we use four by four uh, reeve or mat design. Uh, in the second layer, we put two by two reeve or mat design and, sorry. And in the upper layer, we put the plain design. So water can be absorbed by this one and transport this way and move faster to the outer layer. So that's our uh, uh, natural uh, kind of uh, uh, branching structure. But uh, what we observed from this, that uh, if it is a three layer structure, the main thing we observed is it become more thicker. Obviously it absorbs very good. There is no doubt of that. And it transports the water from the bottom to the top also very nice. But main problem arises if it is thick enough, such kind of materials are not suitable for the summer purpose because when we need the more absorption is in the summer. So we develop another structure is a two layer structure. So here in the bottom, we put the two by two mat or deep and in which is open up in the uh, top layer as a plain fabric. So this fabric, we use the very finer yarns and uh, become very thin and having a lot of uh, advantages. So let's see this structure. So 
see this is a three layer structure where four ions are at the bottom it is divided in two two and finally it comes up in the top layer as single individuals so this is a two layer structure here at the bottom layer two two ions are divided and which is completely open up in the top layer so this is the water absorption uh, behavior we, we uh, show here. So this uh, difference between this each picture is only 0 0.021 second. That means 21.4 millisecond. And you can see this is just you are dropping from the uh, nozzle. This is in the air and this is vanished. So its absorption is excellent. And uh, uh, a similar way we develop the knitted fabric structure also. So here you can see in the in the outer layer it is more open. In the inner layer it is uh, uh, grouped together. So this is the cross-sectional view. Uh, in the inner layer it is grouped together, which is open up more in the outer layer. So here also you can see the uh, view of the structure of the knitted structure. So uh, these way we we develop some kind of branching structure inside the textile fabrics. So I have already put a lot of uh, references. Uh, you may see it if you are more interested. So for measuring this property, because the, this is a very high absorbing material, we, we developed a, a unique uh, tester for that. Uh, so we, we called it actually plant structure, uh, transplant or water transport tester. So this actually measures the water absorption property in real time. So we put the fabric here. Uh, when you on the switch, it automatically go down. And once it touch the uh, 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 water bed at the bottom, so immediately, sorry, immediately the uh, 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 amount of absorptions are recorded in the computer. So I, I have not discussed uh, much about uh, the uh, properties because this, this is a huge thing. So I just summarize the main advantages of this uh, plant fabric. So first thing, it absorbs very quickly and transfers the body sweat to the outer layer of the fabric. So that means it's having a moisture management property. So keep your skin dry and uh, go to the outer layer so it can uh, dry faster and keep your skin dry. So fabrics dry quickly and help to keep the skin dry. So such properties are imparted in the fabric by changing the structure. So most of this kind of properties are available. Some of these properties are available in the market, but they are mainly given due to the uh, chemical finishes. But when you use the chemical finishes, if you wash for a few times, that finish go. But this is uh, done by means of uh, changing the structure. And that's why this is uh, very permanent. And fabrics are very lightweight, extremely strong as compared to a regular uh, 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 fabrics. We, we check the uh, strength is higher than that and dimensionally stable. So it's, it's having a better anti-dinkle property uh, of this fabric. And uh, we also observed its breathability is uh, uh, around 1.5 times of a plain fabric and around 1.3 times of a, a twill fabric of similar weight. So this uh, product actually we, we, we already uh, given to some local industry and afterwards we, we shared with say, Polo, uh, Affection, uh, uh, and many others uh, US brands. So another thing is the biomimic of the super hydrophobic uh, uh, leaf. This is also a, a natural phenomenon. So uh, if you see this lotus leaf, so in the lotus leaf, uh, there are hierarchical uh, micro and nano roughness. If you see this one, so this is a combination of micro inside this microstructure is there and outside it, such a nanostructures are available. So uh, 
we try to imitate this structure and make some uh, super hydrophobic materials. So using uh, two, three times uh, 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 coating, we, we try to achieve these things. So uh, we have observed that this uh, aspect ratio of the particle also have some uh, effect on this uh, uh, super hydrophobic property. So when we coat it with 5% PVDF on, uh, on a fabric uh, using the electro spinning technique, uh, we, we saw the uh, particles uh, aspect ratio is coming around, uh, means aspect ratio means length is width is coming around uh, 0.92, means it is more or less same. So when we reduce the percentage of the PVDF, we can see the aspect ratio is uh, going lower and lower. So that means length is increasing, whereas the width is reducing. And we observe this has some effect on the uh, 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 super hydrophobic properties. So let's see how we have done this thing. So here we have made this one, you can see under this some uh, uh, bigger structure or microstructure is there. So over that microstructure, these kind of nanostructures are created. And uh, to achieve a very high super hydrophobicity by this means. So we, we normally, uh, uh, for this, we use the PVDF polymer and uh, FSM. Uh, uh, these two kind of polymers we use. So. Uh, for single layer fabric, we try only this uh, different 5%, 1%, 0.5%, we tried this uh, single layer. So after that, we tried the double layer. Double layer means first we try with the 8% uh, PVDA, on that we try with 1% PVDA. So first we prepare the microstructure, then we prepare the uh, nanostructure on that, and that gives the benefit. And uh, here we use the PVDA and FSM, so first is the 5% PBDF, and then we use a mixture of FSM and PBDF. So we observe that when the uh, percentage of the PBDF is uh, lower than 1%, uh, we, we have not observed uh, much benefit in terms of the super hydrophobicity. So let's see this uh, uh, graph, I think uh, gives us a much better picture. So this is this side. It is a contact angle. So this is the contact angle means uh, as much the less the water bubble touch the uh, surface, the contact angle would be maximum. So maximum contact angle possible is 180 uh, means theoretically. And uh, this is the uh, water roll off angle means if you put a water drop on the surface. And if you incline the surface at which angle the water start to roll off. So uh, when we use the uh, uh, single layer coating, so this is one step coated samples. So S1 to S6. So you can see when we reduce the uh, percentage of the PVDF, this is for the 1% and this is for the 0.5%. They are almost same. We have not found much benefit in, in terms of the contact angle. So uh, only little advantage was observed in terms of the rolling angle. Uh, but for the two-way one, uh, yeah, it has been observed that when the uh, uh, initial one is the 5% and then it is around uh, 1%, we can achieve a maximum benefit. And when we use the FSM, that is a, a fluorine reunited uh, silane molecules, so this is very highly super hydrophobic, and that increases the benefit much more. So here you, we can see the uh, uh, contact angle becomes around 170 degree uh, for 5% uh, uh, PVDF and then 1% and 10% FSM. So that gives the maximum uh, contact angle. And here we can see the uh, water roll-off angle is around 
one to two degree, very low, less. Just to touch it, it drops off. So uh, this is the entire picture. So this is another kind of uh, 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 materials we developed. Here you can see the water uh, is rolling on the outer surface, but inner surface is wet. So it's a differential super hydrophilic and uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic fabric. So outer surface, you can see the water is rolling and inner surface, it is already wet, which is quite visible. And these kind of materials are very suitable for, for band-aid, such kind of things. So where uh, it absorbs your past material uh, from your body. And whereas the outer surface is uh, hydrophobic, super hydrophobic, so it, uh, you can take a bath. So such kind of materials are very suitable for that kind of things. So <laughs> next we copied something like uh, this pine cone. Pine cone, we, we know that uh, this is uh, based on the hygral expansion. So when the uh, uh, pine cone absorbs water, uh, it closes. Uh, so using that means when the natural materials absorb water, it expands uh, in, in, uh, in, 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 sorry, in, in the surface. And this property we used uh, for uh, making some moisture responsive fabric. Uh, so here, these portions we uh, prepared using the polyester and this one we prepared using the uh, wool and we cut it by the laser. And we observed that when there is a water, so these portions is swell up and the permeability increases. So here you can see the uh, area of this one is less and area of this one is more. So using this one, we, we make a three-dimensional uh, open structure where the uh, holes you can see, it is coming from the inner layer to the outer layer. And uh, one side of this one is made of the wool and this is made of the polyester. So whenever there is uh, water, so these holes become more circular and uh, air can pass much better. So, another thing is the leaf stomata. So, at the beginning, I discussed that leaf stomata. So, when the amount of moisture become more inside the uh, uh, tree, this leaf stomata opens up. And when the amount of moisture is less, then it closes up. So this is a unique feature. And if we can uh, use such kind of feature in the textiles, definitely it would be a unique or smart fabric we can develop out of it. So because when we sweat much means when our body is more heated. So at that time, if it is possible to open up the pores and more moisture can be dissipated, definitely we would be much benefited out of it. So for this purpose, we used the uh, hydrogel. Uh, different hydrogels are available, like PAM is there, like uh, your PVA hydrogel is there. So any kind of hydrogel can give such kind of property. So. This is a, a regular fabric, knitted fabric uh, uh, with uh, viscous fiber and uh, with elastin, so that it's very highly elastic fiber. And we simply just printed this thing. And we have observed when this fabric is getting wet, these printed portions are changing from the two-dimensional to the three-dimensional. And that's the uh, unique thing. So, uh, 
So here you can see when it is become three dimensional, automatically its contact with the body would be reduced and that gives you much more benefit. So because when we sweat, what happens? This fabric sticks with our body and definitely we are not feeling good. But if this forms a three dimensional shape, so contact with our body would be reduced and we can get much more benefit. So once we achieve it, after that we try to cut these portions using the laser cutter. And then we printed it using the printer. So in such a way that outer portions are this hydrogel and inner portion is uh, nothing, means it's only the fabric. So when we weighed these portions, we saw a nice achievement. So this is the dry fabric and this is the wet fabric. You can see the air gap, which is uh, here, area is uh, 2.55. Now this area is almost become double, 3.96, around 55.29% increase in the air gap. So that gives you much more benefit in terms of the air permeability. We, we filed a patent on that, but uh, we are working, still working on this uh, area. And uh, I, I can't disclose many things at this stage. So another unique thing is our human skin. Human skin, we can see when we sweat, the sweat comes from the inner side to the outer end. But for the human skin, the from outer side, we cannot push the uh, water to the inside of the fabric or inside of the skin, sorry. Uh, so, so this is a unique property. So if we can uh, uh, achieve such kind of things on a fabric, I think uh, that would give us a, a nice kind of fabric and a lot of benefits we can achieve out of it. So, uh, so here we develop a fabric where uh, the water can pass from the inside to the outer side, but cannot go from the outer side to inner side. So this is a, a directional water flow. So here outer side, it is repel the water, for, whereas from the inner side to outer side, it absorbs and bring it to the outer side. So uh, for, for making this kind of fabric, we took a cotton fabric first, which is uh, hydrophilic in nature. Then it was coated with uh, uh, super hydrophobic finish. And after that, we, we uh, heat set it at around 130 degrees centigrade. Then we put a mask. Uh, so the top mask is having the small holes. Each hole is having one mm diameter and the gap between the hole is around 10 mm and bottom one bottom mass does not have any holes after doing this we put this whole thing in the plasma treatment so that the uh, so that the fabric uh, uh, is uh, treated with the hydrophilic one, only these mask portions. So doing this, we achieve something. So we achieve a gradient from hydrophobic to hydrophilic. So outer portion, this one become more hydrophilic, whereas this one become little bit hydrophobic and increasing the hydrophilic towards the, uh, hydrophobic towards the hydrophilic. So this way, a benefit was observed. So I, I show you this uh, video. I think uh, in this video, we put the water on the outer side. So you can see the water will just drop 
on this surface because this is a hydrophobic surface whereas here the water is absorbs and bring it to the face side let's see So we can see here how it drops from this side. And let's see this one. So just similar like the skins. So, uh, so that's the advantage. Obviously, it's not happening in all portions. Only that hole where it is put. So in that portion, this thing is happening. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Manoj Kumar Sarkar for giving such a beautiful presentation for the interest of our institution of engineers as well as of the attendees. So in the very beginning, or your topic was biomimetics or biomimicry. Before going to your topic, I am just, I would like to mention, there is a saying, there is everything in the nature. Nature is also a teacher or source of knowledge. So from the knowledge, from the nature, we can gather so many things. We can learn and we can convert many things as per nature. And your theme of the topic or the, or the work is based on that theme. So many things you have developed from your research activities. So I, I will just mention a few points how the last item was your how to make human skin like fabric so for the more comfort property of the users we have shown the lotus leaf effect how such lotus leaf effect can be produced for producing super hydrophilic fabric we have given the total concept of plant structure fabric plant structure by utilizing plain 2 by 2 rib warp rib and 4 by 4 warp rib how the various at various level the absorption property is different so you have explained it explained it very lucidly i think all the attendees have learned so many things from your paper not only uh, not only you have done the weaving, you have shown how knitting can also be utilized for making such type of fabrics. And you have discussed the different advantages of plant structure fabric and so on. So there is no end. You have covered a lot of things under the heading biomimetry or biomimicry, biometrics or biomimetry. So we see will carry out your research research in future too, for the better contribution to the society. So thank you, Dr. Sarkar. So now both the speakers have presented their very good themes of their presentation. And hopefully many, most of the attendees have learned something and enjoyed the presentations. Personally, I have learned so many things and enjoyed you both the presentation. So now we may go for the time is there. We can go for the question and answering session. But as gathered, there are only three question answers in the chat box. The first, the first question is our professor Ravi Shankar Chattopadhyay. Professor Chattopadhyay, 
will you please will you please unmute hello professor rubishankar chattopadhyay will you please unmute yourself continue professor rubishankar chattopadhyay will you please unmute mr king suk uh, king suk sen will you please look into the matter sir he has to unmute from his side hi ah, yeah, his side <coughs> ah, that's nice. yes sir yes sir <coughs> most probably acha before coming to that let him uh, unmute the another actually that is not a question Mr. Rakesh Kumar Gupta has written something about the presentation. My compliments to organizers and speakers, Dr. Robi Chattopadhyay, for giving insight about cotton. After listening to the presentation, I remember the wisdom world, wisdom words of late Sri Kosturbhai Kosturbhai, Chairman Orbin Mills Lalbhai Group, Ahmedabad, when I had joined. Way back, Orbin Mills in 1977 used to say that half a yard of cotton cloth is required when a human is born, and six yard when he <laughs> attains moksha, means at the time of dying. Cotton is such a sustainable and beautiful fiber that even lifelong study for generations will be lost to understand this product. It's just a comment, beautiful comment. professor chattopadhyay no i am not getting his response and another person nilam dubey has mentioned what can be a natural fiber solution to the solar poly houses or solar dryers that required high transmissivity to allow solar radiation Doctor Sarkar, can you say something? What can I don't know whom he has asked? Uh, what What can be a natural fiber solution to the solar poly houses or solar dryers that require high transmissivity to allow solar radiation? Yeah, actually, I I work with some uh, means uh, radiation and transmissivity. Uh, With with some coating, actually directly it is not possible, but with some coating it is definitely possible to enhance the transmittivity and the radiation. So you you need to allow some kind of uh, apply some kind of coating like say uh, nano uh, CNT coating, carbon nanotube coating, uh, or the graphite uh, coating. You need to uh, apply on this. That can be a a a, a high radiative. a high transmittivity and radiation is is possible to achieve even even uh, uh, metal coating is also done to enhance the uh, 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 reduce the radiation so if you want the high radiation definitely you need some kind of uh, uh, cnt kind of uh, coating but uh, with direct natural fiber because the natural fibers mainly absorb the thing so it does not gives you much benefit in terms of uh uh this poly houses acha dr sarkar thank you for the for your response or the reply of the question you are having one or two more questions before that i must mention one of our attendee mr amit kumar has mentioned it's very knowledgeable thank you sir so thanks to mr amit kumar also next questions from mr ajit sahu Ajit Sahu, his question is: Purposes of plant fabrics. Yeah, ma mainly we use the plant fabric for the summer garments because its absorption property is very high, so is more suitable for the summer garments. Uh, we we mainly use so far it as a summer garment. So its absorption is very high. Its uh, permeability is also very high, and. Uh, Crease recovery is also good enough, so uh, that's why we we mainly use it for the summer garments. 
so all kind of means uh, shirting uh, means pants for all kind of summer garments we use it. okay okay thank you uh, another question just listen can you suggest which of the natural fibers stated is suitable for ground improvement the question is clear not, not yeah, clear to not me clear. Uh, suitable for ground improvement is which kind of ground improvement uh, uh, that is uh, not mentioned anyway let us go to the next one mainly which fiber fabric used in plant fabric the question has come from oh wow anonymous uh, anonymous yeah. <laughs> okay Okay. Anyway, I think you will be able to. Answer. Yeah, yeah. So actually, we mainly use the uh, cotton fibers because its its uh, absorption is good enough. So uh, obviously, this is not limited to cotton. You you we can use the viscose. Also, we tried with the viscose uh, because the requirement is it should be absorbing material. If the material is absorbing, then this property would be enhanced. If the material is not absorbing, so you can't see. such kind of because another thing we observed when after making the fabric if the sizings are not properly removed we saw the results are very poor but when we remove the size we saw the results are very good thank you in the meantime our professor art chattopadhyay has joined with us now the yes. this next question is from mr or professor deepak kulkarni although not mentioned the place i know is from nagpur both the presentations were interesting dr chattopadhyay took an excellent review of properties of natural fibers as relevant to sustainability so he has just commented it's not a question so thank, thank you, you mr deepak kulkarni another question again from ajit sahu cost of plant fabric per meter uh cost of plant fabric per meter uh, in hong kong dollar is is coming around uh, means manufacturing cost used to be around 10 10 hong kong dollar per meter but that depends also you okay. know means if it is a starting fabric if it is a starting fabric obviously the cost will be very but uh, obviously it is little bit costlier uh, than the regular fabric but not very costly but anyway attendees are getting interest and they are st have the started asking question at a faster rate okay earlier there was only three questions now it has become already 14 next question from pramod prabhakar bichlan sir my question is regarding the fiber testing from where we can do the single fiber testing tensile strength because whenever we go single fiber test they says we will give bundle strength please suggest me how we can get the property of fiber professor chattopadhyay just yes yeah. uh, single fiber test you can do on instant tensile tester yeah yeah can be done it okay. can be done okay thank you then uh, rangoraju n the question is is there any instrument available to measure the denier of this plant fiber and what will be its variation in diameter is there any instrument available to measure the denier of this plant fibers and what will be its variation in denier so as far as i know <coughs> the, there is no instrument as such for measuring the variation uh, the denier of you can take the simple or no, you take a weight by weight, weight by length ratio take a fixed weight Take sorry length, take the weight, and find out the ratio. From there, you can find out the denier for so, root fibers, let us say, or for flax fibers. And if we want to measure diameter, we have to go. You know, we have to look at the fibers under a microscope. Microscope to measure the diameter. Okay, thank you, Professor Chattopadhyay. Uh, another question, again from uh, Doctor, sorry, uh, Mr. Deepak Kulkarni. question to dr manoj sarkar the question is not a question this one oh acha acha okay okay deepak ji acha manoj sarkar sir highlighted a nice topic of biomimetic thank you thank you kulkarni sir then another anonymous attendee 
कैन यू सजेस्ट हुई ऑफ द नेचुरल फाइबर स्टेटेड इज सुइटेबल फॉर ग्राउंड इंप्रूवमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ पैरामीटर डॉक्टर मानव सरकार द क्वेश्चन इज कैन यू सजेस्ट हुई ऑफ द नेचुरल फाइबर स्टेटेड इज सुइटेबल फॉर ग्राउंड इंप्रूवमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ पैरामीटर्स Yes, strength parameters. I think uh, any bust fiber is suitable for that. Uh, natural fiber among the natural fiber, I think uh, bust fibers are uh, stronger enough uh, as compared to the other uh, natural Theology. fiber. Yeah, so can be used. Yes, yeah, surely can be used or can be blended with other other fibers and can be used. So strength for for my fabric, I think uh, this plant structure fabric, I think strength is quite good. excellent strength all kind of abrasion uh, tensile uh, all kind of strength is excellent so we don't need to bother for the strength much because the strength is good enough with cotton so if definitely if if you wanted to improve it five further yeah you can use uh, any any other fiber because this is a structure so structure you can play with anything no problem acha next candidate is chandra kiran potu kuchi She has written. Thank you for the presentations. What kind of fabric is used for convert atmospheric moisture to water in desert areas? Is it clear, Doctor Manoj Sarkar? Yeah, I may say you you need to absorb the moisture from the uh, air, and that need to be mis collected. So such kind of fabric is needed, means which absorbs the moisture from the air. so people are working on this area too because uh, uh, in in some areas they have the seas but they don't have the uh, good drinking water yeah people are uh, doing such things they are catching the uh, moisture from the air and then uh, just cool it down and make the water yeah so, people are doing this so chandra kiran uh, potukuchi is from uh, bisakhapatnam so thank you for uh, attending the webinar as well as for asking your or putting your comments next is rangoraju n oh acha already the his or her question was answered other than instant okay other than <laughs> other than instant acha <laughs> then then uh, Uh, next question is from itis sri das only thank oh, you oh tha his uh, comments yeah. excellent presentation thank you so much sir so uh, itis sri thank thanks for you also ya god of sarkar uh, then then again uh, rango raju n uh, thank you sir and last one is uh, gorob sarkar dr chattopadhyay has given a presentation regarding different natural sustainable fibers sustainability also includes economic sustainability i am in spinning industry in product development producing different sustainable fiber blended yarn but neither of them are economically cheaper whether whether it is hemp or linen or sea cell smart cell pineapple banana etc also at a present working with naia fiber would you please suggest how to make these products more cheaper for the commercialization professor chattopadhyay for this uh, uh, i have really have no no really suggestion how to make it cheaper cheaper means if you want to make something cheaper you cannot really change the cost of the fiber only thing is that can you reduce the processing cost which is can you reduce the energy cost these are the things we have to think uh, because the cost of fiber is not in your hand because you are the user of the fiber and what we can do is how to reduce the processing cost right energy is a very important component of the cost the productivity of the machine is another important part of the cost these are the things we have to see acha then another question is Yes, our time is in our hand. One or two minutes. Biodegradability of fiber cotton versus polyfiber overview. 
Bhaskar Sen, member of the institute, member number has been given. Is the question clear? Biodegradability of cotton fiber, cotton versus polyfiber overview. So polyfiber. Uh, yeah. Please, you, you can take it polyester, poly or poly yeah. or some, some fiber with cotton degradability. Just have one or two lines, please. Overview. Cotton fiber is uh, biodegradable, so that's a big advantage. Whereas synthetic fiber like polyesters are not biodegradable. They, are, they degrade over a pretty long period of time. It takes few hundreds of years to really you know, degrade. So, Achha, Mr. Ojisau is going on asking question. <laughs> ah. So it is the last question for uh, yeah. For the audience, please. Our time is almost over. Please mention a plant fabric characteristic if possible. I yeah, think I think he has given everything in details. Okay. Next question is another from Deepak Kulkarni. Dr. R. Chattopadhyay, sir. How will you compare the biodegradability of natural fiber with those of organic fertilizer as far as soil property enhancement? Deepak. Kulkarni Nagpur. Oh, sorry, I, I have no answer regarding this. <laughs> Agri the answer. Yeah, actually, I, I write a, recently write a paper in press uh, uh, on, on the uh, review of this uh, uh, materials. Okay. So, uh, actually, cotton, all these things, they damage the soil. So, Achha. when you put this thing in the soil, it actually damages the soil. So, it is, it, so, this is the reason people are working to change the cotton to the viscose or uh, some other products or even some glucose so that this damaging can be reduced. So when we, we dump the cotton fabric in the soil, obviously it takes around 40 to 45 days uh, to, to, to completely dissolve in the mm -hmm. soil, but okay. it, it damages the soil. Okay, and thank you, Kulkarni, sir, uh, for giving the information or our knowledge. Uh, so thank you again. So now, it is the time, uh, time is almost over. It's the time for giving vote of thanks. So for the purpose, I would like to request our Professor N.K. Brombo, the Honorary Secretary of West Bengal State Center to give the vote of thanks. Our Brombo. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, th <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Um, okay. uh, <laughs> for your fantastic discussions regarding natural textile and various types of their physical chemical properties that I have observed and still going in the research. But my, before I start my so-called word of thanks, I have a one question, recycling. There's a word which is a very prominent in the world at present due to increasing pollutions. The professors, Sharkar and professors who have discussed all these things, have they really realized which composites in such publications of the artificial products of fibers should be considered in the recycling, means biodegradable and whatever you like to say. We are really not so competent with the jute technology. That could be so one of the questions in such natural and artificial uh, polymer or so-called artificial uh, textile system. The huge amount of textiles are growing every day. And we have to think also uh, the degradability as well as multiple use of this textile in other purpose that could be considered as the recycling. So with that a short introduction, I start my word of thanks in the form that it is my proud privilege to extend my sincere thanks 
and gratitude to all the distinguished participants in the technical webinar in the theme Natural Fibers for sustainable textile. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes sir. Yeah, yeah. Organized by the Textile Engineering Divisions of West Bengal State Center IEI through online platform Zoom. At the outset, I convey my sincere thanks to the panelists, Professor Ravi Shankar Chattopata, Professor Department of Textile Engineering IIT Delhi, and Dr. Manush Kumar Sharka, Teaching Fellow, Institute of Textiles and Clothing, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University on today's technical webinar, who have very nicely deliberated their lectures. My sincere thanks also goes to my colleague, Shri Shandip Kumar Dev, Chairman, West Bengal State and IEI. My heartful thanks also goes to Dr. H. Thakare, President of IEI. Dr. G. Ranganath, Chairman, Kate IEI. My heartful thanks also goes to Professor Dr. Jew and Fiber Technology, University of Calcutta, and, and Chairman, Textile Engineering Division Subcommittee, and moderator of this program. The same feeling is also being shown to all members of the Council and Division Board member of Textile Division. All members of the committee, West Bengal State Center, IEI, and all members of the Textile Engineering Division Subcommittee, Director Technical IEI, and his team for their wholehearted support to make the program a success. Last but not the least, my sincere thanks also goes to all who are, ben who are be behind the screen and giving their silent support, silent support in this technical webinar. Thank you. Uh, I thank you really uh, that uh, I am really astounded by hearing all type of progress which is uh, being continued in the uh, Western world as well as uh, in the developing countries. And India needed uh, uh, the more prominent recycling process of the textile industry. Thank you very much. So thank you once more for Professor Chattopadhyay as well as Dr. Manoj Kumar Sharkar. So with this, we are going to close the today's webinar program. So Mr. Kosik Sen, will you please? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So, so With now kind permission from the chair, we are now yes. uh, concluding the webinar, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. To everybody, including our Mr. Kosik. Thank you. Thank you. Instruction. Thank you, Professor Shadun. Uh, see you, see you, see you, see you. <laughs> I'm always with you. <laughs>